Hi class, welcome to this video on Euler's formula. Euler's formula is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta, where i is the square root of minus one, i squared is minus one, it's a complex number. This formula is probably known to you, but it's very important in our uh, work in mathematical physics, and I want to make sure that you understand this formula and its consequences. So first, let's see if we can actually prove that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Suppose we consider a function of theta, which is e to the minus i theta, times cosine theta plus i sine theta. We can use the product rule to differentiate that with respect to theta, and if we differentiate the first term, e to the minus i theta, just think treating i as a constant, we get minus i e to the minus i theta times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And the second term, we just take the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. We get minus sine theta plus i cosine theta. But if we see, if we combine things together, this cosine theta term is multiplied by minus i e to the minus i theta. And similarly here, it's i times cosine theta e to the minus i theta. So the cosine theta terms drop out. And if we look at the sine theta terms, using the fact that i times minus i is actually equal to one, we see the sine theta terms drop out as well. So dft theta is actually zero. That means the function f of theta is a constant. Since it's a constant, we can evaluate it at a convenient point and figure out what it is. That most convenient point is just theta equals zero, but f of zero is e to the i zero, but e to, any, e to the zero is just one times cosine zero, which is one, plus i sine zero, which is zero. So we put all this together, we see that f of zero is one. Since the function itself is a constant and its value at zero is one, that means the constant itself is one, or e to the minus i theta cosine theta plus i sine theta is equal to one, which we, if we invert the e to the i theta, we get e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Euler's formula is very convenient, can be used in a number of ways. We're going to cover a few of these in the next couple of minutes. One is that we can use Euler's formula to give us a simple polar form of any complex number. A complex number is of the form x plus iy, where x and y are real. x is the real part of the complex number z, and y is the imaginary part of the complex number z. Since a complex number corresponds to a pair x and y, I can think of this as a point in a plane. So if I plot the point x and y on the two-dimensional plane, I can think of this plane as representing all complex numbers z. This is sometimes referred to as the complex plane, something we will refer to uh, and come back to later on in the course. But since this is a point in, uh, in the plane, I can also think of this in polar coordinates. It has a radius, the distance from the origin, r. It has an angle theta. This line makes an angle theta with the x-axis. And if I look at this right triangle, I see that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. If I put these two things together into, to form the complex number z, x plus i, y is r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. Factoring out the r, I see that z can be written as r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. But this is just e to the i theta. So I can represent any complex number in a polar form. z is r e to the i theta using Euler's formula. The modulus of z is just the distance from the origin is the radius r. This angle theta is called the argument of z. So the argument of x plus i y is the argument of r e to the i theta is just theta itself. Notice that this angle theta is actually only defined modulo 2 pi, because I could always add or subtract um, 2 pi from it and still represent the same angle in the complex plane. We can use Euler's formula to relate exponentials to trigonometric functions. We can start with Euler's formula itself. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. If we look at e to the minus i theta, that's just e to the i times minus theta, we get cosine of minus theta, which is cosine theta, and sine of minus theta, which is minus sine theta. Therefore, e to the minus i theta is cosine theta plus uh, minus i sine theta. If I put these together, you can see that cosine theta is e to the i theta uh, plus e to the minus i theta over 2, and sine theta can be written as e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. If I use the definitions of what I mean by the hyperbolic uh, cosines and hyperbolic sine functions. Hyperbolic cosine of anything is e to that thing plus e to the minus that thing over 2. So the hyperbolic cosine of i theta is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2, or just cosine theta. 
the hyperbolic sine of i theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2 up to an i. That's just i times sine theta. So all of these functions, trigonometric functions and exponentials and hyperbolic trigonometric functions are all related together. We can also use Euler's formula to prove some convenient identity. So for example, suppose we look at e to the 3 i theta. That's just cosine of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. Suppose I want to know what the cosine of 3 theta is. I could work it out using the addition formula for cosines and sines. I can also say e to the 3 i theta is just e to the i theta cubed because that's the rule for how we exponentiate. When we take an exponential and take it to the third power, we just multiply the power by 3. So that's cosine theta plus i sine theta cubed, which I can expand out using the binomial formula. It's cosine cubed plus 3 cosine squared times i sine theta plus 3 cosine theta times the square of the second term, i sine theta plus i sine theta cubed. Um, if I collect the real and the imaginary parts, there's a real part here, cosine cubed theta. If I take the i sine theta squared, that's minus sine squared theta. That's 3 cosine theta sine squared theta with a minus sign. Therefore, the real part, cosine theta, is just cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta sine squared theta. And if I equate the imaginary parts, I see that sine of 3 theta is 3 cosine squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. So this is a very convenient way of uh, deriving identities involving multiple angles in, uh, of trigonometric functions. One last use of Euler's formula is in order to do uh, calculus with it, in particular calculus trigonometric functions. We'll often be interested in something like the derivative of a trigonometric function cosine omega t. That's, of course, easy to compute. It's minus omega sine omega t. But I can do it another way. I can say cosine of omega t is just the real part of e to the i omega t. But the real part if I compute the derivative of what's inside first, that's easy to do. The real part of the derivative of e to the i omega t, well, the derivative of e to the i omega t is easy to remember. It's just the i omega times e to the i omega t. If I put that together, that's i omega times cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. The real part is just comes from this i times this i here. It gives me a minus sign. It gives me minus omega sine omega t. So what I see when all is said and done is the derivative of the real part of e to the i omega t is the real part of the derivative of e to the i omega t. It doesn't matter whether I first take the real part and then take the derivative, or I take the derivative and then take the real part. This is really very convenient because it's much easier to take derivatives and keep track of derivatives of exponentials than it is to keep track of derivatives of cosines and sines because every time you take a derivative, cosine changes to a sine and a sine to a cosine. So in many of the calculations we do, we'll often, instead of dealing with cosines and sines, deal instead with complex exponentials and use the fact that those manipulations are easier and they allow us to actually compute things about sines and cosines uh, in the end of the day.